HEAO-1 was an X-ray telescope launched in 1977. HEAO-1 surveyed the sky in the X-ray portion of the electromagnetic spectrum 0.2 keV 10 MeV, providing nearly constant monitoring of X-ray sources near the ecliptic poles and more detailed studies of a number of objects by observations lasting three to six hours. It was the first of NASA's three high-energy astronomy observatories, HEAO-1, launched August 12, 1977 aboard an Atlas rocket with a Centaur upper stage, operated until 9 January 1979. During that time, it scanned the X-ray sky almost three times HEAO included four X-ray and gamma-ray astronomy instruments, known as A1, A2, A3, and A4, respectively before launch, HEAO-1 was known as HEAO-A. The orbital inclination was about 22.7 degrees. HEAO-1 re-entered the Earth's atmosphere on 15 March 1979. A1, Large Area Sky Survey Instrument The A1, or Large Area Sky Survey instrument, covered the 0.25—25 keV energy range, using seven large proportional counters. It was designed, operated, and managed at the Naval Research Laboratory under the direction of Principal Investigator Dr. Herbert D. Friedman, and the prime contractor was TRW. The HEAO A1 X-ray source catalog included 842 discrete X-ray sources. A2 – Cosmic X-ray experiment The A2, or Cosmic X-ray experiment CXE, from the Goddard Space Flight Center, covered the 2–60 keV energy range with high spatial and spectral resolution. The principal investigators were Dr. Elihu A. Bolt and Dr. Gordon P. Garmier. A3 – Modulation collimator instrument The A3, or Modulation Collimator MC instrument, provided high precision positions of X-ray sources, accurate enough to permit follow-up observations to identify optical and radio counterparts. It was provided by the Center for Astrophysics Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory and the Harvard College Observatory, SAO, HCO. Principal investigators were Dr. Daniel A. Schwartz of SAO and Dr. Hale V. Bratt of MIT. A4 – Hard X-ray, low-energy gamma-ray experiment The A4, or hard X-ray, low-energy gamma-ray experiment, used sodium iodide scintillation counters to cover the energy range from about 20 keV to 10 MeV. It consisted of seven clustered modules, of three distinct designs, in a roughly hexagonal array. Each detector was actively shielded by surrounding CSI scintillators, in active anti-coincidence, so that an extraneous particle or gamma ray event from the side or rear would be vetoed electronically, and rejected. It was discovered in early balloon flight by experimenters in the 1960s that passive collimators or shields, made of materials such as lead, actually increase the undesired background rate, due to the intense showers of secondary particles and photons produced by the extremely high energy particles characteristic of the space radiation environment. A plastic anti-coincidence scintillation shield, essentially transparent to gamma-ray photons, protected the detectors from high-energy charged particles entering from the front. For all seven modules, the unwanted background effects of particles or photons entering from the rear was suppressed by a «foswitch» design, in which the active nigh detecting element was optically coupled to a layer of CSI on its rear surface, which was in turn optically coupled to a single photomultiplier tube for each of the seven units. Because the NI has a much faster response time, approximately 0.25 microseconds than the CSI, approximately 1 microsecond, electronic pulse-shaped discriminators could distinguish good events in the NI from mixed events accompanied by a simultaneous interaction in the CSI. The largest or high energy detector head occupied the central position and covered the upper range from approximately 120 keV to 10 MeV with a field of view FOV collimated to 37 degrees FWHM. Its NI detector was 5 inches 13 centimeters in diameter by 3 inches 7.6 centimeters thick. 
The extreme penetrating power of photons in this energy range made it necessary to operate the head in electronic anti-coincidence with the surrounding CSI and also the six other detectors of the hexagon. Two low-energy detectors LEDs were located in positions 180 degrees apart on opposite side of the hexagon. They had thin approximately 3 mm thick NI detectors, also 5 inches in diameter, covering the energy range from approximately 10 200 keV. Their FOV was defined to fan-shaped beams of 1.7 degrees by 20 degrees FWHM by passive, parallel slat plate collimators. The slats of the two LEDs were inclined to plus or minus 30 degrees to the nominal HEAO scanning direction, crossing each other at 60 degrees. Thus, working together, they covered a wide field of view, but could localize celestial sources with a precision determined by their 1.7 degrees narrow fields. The four medium energy detectors meds, with a nominal energy range of 80 keV 3 MeV, had 3 inches dia by 1 inch thick Ni detector crystals, and occupied the four remaining positions in the hexagon of modules. They had circular FOVs with a 17 degrees FWHM. The primary data from A4 consisted of event by event telemetry, listing each good .e., unvetoed event in the NI detectors. The experiment had the flexibility to tag each event with its pulse height proportional to its energy, and a one or two byte time tag, allowing precision timing of objects such as gamma ray bursts and pulsars. Results of the experiment included a catalog of the positions and intensities of hard X-ray sources, a strong observational basis for extremely strong magnetic fields of order 1013 g on the rotating neutron stars associated with her X1 and 4 U0115 plus 634, a definitive diffuse component spectrum between 13 and 200 keV, discovery of the power law Shape of the Cygnus X1 power density spectrum, and discovery of slow intensity Cycles in the X-ray sources SMC X1 and LMC X4, resulting in approximately 15 Ph.D. theses and approximately 100 scientific publications. The A4 instrument was provided and managed by the University of California at San Diego, under the direction of Prof. Lawrence E. Peterson, in collaboration with the X-ray group at MIT, where the initial A4 data reduction was performed under the direction of Professor Walter H. G. Lewin. See also HEAO program Einstein Observatory High Energy Astronomy Observatory 3 Timeline of artificial satellites and space probes References External links First High Energy Astrophysics Observatory on the Internet The Star Splitters by Wallace H. Tucker, 1984